An Eagles standout in the 1960s, Ray Ruling scored 1,105 career points, which ranks 8th among three-year players and 27th all-time. He was named to the 1968 Metro Collegiate All-Star Team, the 1967 Governor's Classic All-Tournament Team, and was a 1967 All-Mid-Atlantic Conference Honorable Mention selection. Ruling had 83% of his free throws, a mark which still ranks 10th all-time in program history. As a junior, he averaged 20 points per game to rank among the top 50 in the country. A two-sport athlete who competed in track and field, his triple jump of 41 feet, 7 and 3 quarter inches is still fourth all-time. And so he brings all of those talents here tonight as he joins the illustrious group known as the Pop Cassell Hall of Fame. And please welcome to the stage a classmate of Ray's from the class of 1968, ladies and gentlemen, Ronald Boots Nissenbaum. Thank you, welcome. Uh, thank you, Dr. Walker, the Hall of Fame Committee, the Athletics Department, and the people who wrote in to support Ray Rowling's domination. Special thanks also to Jack Cassell, whose emotional and financial support are unending, and you continue your dad's legacy. Thank you, Jack. Special thanks also to Athena Argolopoulos and American University Hall of Fame coach Barbara Ryman. You know why I thank you. Are you ready for a great story? A great story with a happy ending. It's a story that began 56 years ago at American University in September 1964, when Ray Ruling and some of us in this room started our freshman semester. Ray Ruling and his teammates were AU basketball recruits, and I was a 17-year-old. And I did meet Pop Cassell. It was an era of no shot clock, no dunking, no video, no taping of games, no TV, and there was no three-point shot. In addition, freshmen could not play varsity basketball. To give you an idea of what AU basketball was like in those days, in 1964, home games were played at Leonard Gym, where the Katzen Center is now. It held about 400 people. If you sat on the first row of the bleachers, your foot was on the out-of-bounds line. In 1965, AU joined the Middle Atlantic Conference and started playing Division I basketball. The MAC, as it, was, as it was called, contained, among others, historic Philadelphia basketball powers, Temple, LaSalle, and St. Joseph's, then nationally ranked programs, and then throw in Little American University. To join the league, AU had to play games in a bigger venue, and they found Fort Myer, an army fort in Arlington, 10 miles away. As a new member of the conference, we not only competed, we won, and we had a winning record in each of Ray's three years. Going to games, as people over here can attest, was a big deal in spite of the off-campus location. I remember we had 2,500 2500 people there for the LaSalle game, and AU only had 4,000 undergraduates. We went to the fort, as we called it, to see the sweetest jump shot of the era, possessed by our starting guard, Ray Ruling. We called him Radar Ray. Boy, could he shoot, and boy, did he score. And remember, his deep shots were only worth two points at a time. Not only did he score, he was assigned to play defense against the opponent's best scoring guards. Ray was a great defender also. In just three seasons, he scored over 1,000 points, along with his co-star and Hall of Famer Arthur Beatty, the seven-foot center. We had a team to be very proud of. Ray, Art, and Will Lucas were the stars of the team during my AU years. Here, I'll briefly 
categorized with two of his teammates, not categorized, uh, uh, repeat what two of his teammates had to say about him. This is from Will Lucas, who was a star on the team. Despite the 50-plus years that have passed since we played together, I will always remember his jump shot in the perfect form. He had it as a freshman, and he continued to improve every year. In fact, he was launching jumpers from three-point range back then. He had that much confidence in his shot. He could always be depended upon for a clutch shot when we needed it. Yet at the same time, he was not a ball hog. He was perfectly willing to pass to his teammates when they were open. At the same time, he hustled on defense and did the little things you would expect of a great teammate. And Andy Dolich, who had a career with three NBA teams and who was a, uh, primarily a bench sitter in those days. Andy writes, Ray, apologies that I can't be with you tonight to celebrate the honor. I had a great seat from the bench seeing you play against big timers like Shaler Halliman, Fred Mad Dog Carter, and the dynamic LaSalle duo of Larry Cannon and Burling Williams. Having been lucky enough to work for three teams in the NBA and seeing the greatest players in the game, none of them had the perfection of the ruling jump shot. In my eyes, number 21 is number one tonight. The story goes on. I guess it was about five years ago I realized Ray Ruling was not in the AU Hall of Fame. I have seen every AU Hall of Fame basketball player who played since 1964 and did not understand why, based on his achievements, Ray was not a member of this uh, Hall of Fame. Finally, I tracked Ray down, Ray down and invited him and his wife to a game at Bender. At that game two years ago, I heard just how disappointed and upset he was that no one had even nominated him. Then the story gets a little more interesting. It seems that his high school coach, Ed Clements, and the AU coach who recruited him, Jimmy Williams, and both happened to be AU Hall of Fame basketball players. Neither of them, although they promised, nominated him for the Hall of Fame. As mentioned, teammate Art Beatty was in the Hall of Fame. And for all of us who saw Ray play, we knew he was as much a part of those good teams as anyone. When Ray and Linda and I left that afternoon, I told Ray I would look into his candidacy for the Hall. Starting a year ago, the athletics department became more aware of Ray and his accomplishments. Thanks mainly to Ray's scrapbook and the support of many people in this room tonight who shared their opinions as well. We knew that Ray was a Hall of Fame player. Tonight, the years of sadness, disappointment, and why not Ray are over. The written history, the written history backed up what I and other AU fans and his, and his competition saw in the mid-1960s. His, his induction tonight validates those great basketball seasons that ended 52 years ago. And because of Ray and his teammates, the seeds were planted in our hearts to follow and attend AU games today. Ray, his wife Linda, his children and grandchildren are here, and his family to celebrate an AU career that could have been recognized much earlier. But tonight, the story has the happy ending one worthy of an American University Hall of Fame career that began 56 years ago. And at this time, I'd like to invite up to the podium my friend and the AU public address announcer at Fort Myer, Mark Cameron. Hey, buddy. At guard from Montgomery Blair High School, 
5'11", number 21, Ray Rowling, number 21. And I'm supposed to speak after that. Well, now I, now I understand why I'm first on the list. They obviously picked age before beauty. <laughs> I'd like to begin tonight with a little bit of an audience participation. And you don't have to get up. You can sit where you're sitting. But just please repeat after me. Hooray, Ray. Hooray, Ray. With that said, I would like to thank the American University for bestowing this tremendous honor on me. You have absolutely no idea what this award means to me. Absolutely none. I also want to thank you, though, for this induction coming ahead of my induction into the assisted living home. <laughs> Barely, you know. Now, moving forward, they told me that I had between five and seven minutes to speak. And I was also told, if you talk too long, you're going to see people pull out their cell phones. But you have to remember one thing. I am 73 years young, and you are fast approaching my bedtime. <laughs> so I promise not to dribble too long. With that said, most of you are probably looking at me and thinking, that old fart played basketball for American University? Well, you obviously know the answer to that. It's yes, but oh so many years ago. Now bear with me because we have to go back to an era when most of you out here were not even born yet. The year is 1964. Yes, I said 1964. The month is May, and a 17-year-old high school basketball player from Montgomery Blair High School in Silver Spring, Maryland, who just was named Outstanding Basketball Player for Montgomery County, All-County First Team, and a spot on the prestigious All-Metropolitan Team, has just received a letter of intent from the American University. Imagine my excitement. AU was offering me a four-year full scholarship, and all I had to do was play basketball. Play basketball. The thing I loved most in the world to do. What a day that was. And I could not sign that letter quicker. But I was not by myself. AU took it upon themselves to have the largest and best recruiting class to date. Along with myself came one player from Virginia, two from DC, three from Maryland, two from New Jersey, twin brothers from California, and one from PA. We had players so big and so skilled that I didn't see us losing ever, ever. But of course we did. But remember some things. When I played at American University, number one, we wore Converse Chuck Taylor All-Star shoes. And how can I walk today? <laughs> two, there was no three-point line. What a damn shame for me. <laughs> three, there was no dunking. Why? Because of Lou Alcindor, the no-dunk rule. Four, there was no play clock. Five, we played roughly 24 to 25 games per year. And last but not least, freshmen could not play varsity basketball. And our group, as talented as it was, 
would consistently beat the varsity, and unfortunately, we never got the opportunity to play for the coach that recruited all of us, for he was let go after our freshman year. My experience here was very rewarding, not only from the vast success we all had on the basketball court, but for all the great relationships that were formulated, unfortunately, we never kept in touch over the years. When I came to AU in the fall of 1964, I had some personal goals. Number one was to have a successful basketball career. Number two was to score 1,000 points, a personal goal back in the day that actually meant something. And three, to become a member of the Hall of Fame. And with this honor tonight, I have come full circle and I cannot thank American University enough. Now, I would be remiss if I did not mention my most devoted and dedicated fan, over the years. Unfortunately, she is not here tonight, but my mother, Gertrude, is up there looking down on me and saying, Bravo, Raymond, you made it. Over the years, I also... <laughs> Over the years, I also accumulated countless friends, fans, and family that have made my journey an easy one. It was always so much fun for all of you, for, it was always so much fun playing for all of you and having the time of my life. Did I mention I absolutely loved playing basketball? And now as I close up, I would like to mention some of my immediate family who have come here tonight to honor me. First of all, my wife, Linda. She, uh, she has put up with me for almost 50 years, and this will hopefully happen in December. <laughs> Secondly, my older son, Eric, who looks a little like me. <laughs> He's come from Toledo, Ohio. My younger son, Josh, and his wife, Summer. And their two children, Winter and Silas. And Silas's very special friend, Cameron. My sister and husband, Anita and Dave Sapp, coming all the way from Minnesota. My brother, Bob, my much older brother, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> and his wife, Holly, and their oldest child, Alice. My goddaughter, Joan, and her husband, Chris, who also came from Minnesota. And now as I totally close, this has nothing to do with the AU Hall of Fame or basketball, but I just wanted to part with some kind words, six little short stories. Very quick. Number one, once all villagers decided to pray for rain, on the day of prayer, all the people gathered. But only one boy came with an umbrella. That is faith. Two, when you throw babies in the air, they laugh because they know they will catch them. They will, they will, yeah, they will catch them. That is trust. Number three, every night we go to bed without assurance of being alive the next morning, but still, we set the alarms to wake up. That is hope. Four, we plan big things for tomorrow in spite of zero knowledge of the future. That is confidence. Five, we see the world suffering, but still we get married and have children. That is love. Six, on an old man's shirt was written a sentence. I am not 80 years old. I am sweet 16 with 64 years of experience. <laughs> that is attitude. Have a happy day and live your life like these six stories. Remember, good friends are the rare jewels of life, difficult to find and impossible to replace. Thank you all, and I appreciate everything. Thank you.